Blue Origin's Blue Moon lander was said to make its first flight to the moon by winning the NASA Human Landing System contract. But in an interesting turn of events, NASA went in a different direction. However, regardless of NASA's decision, Blue Origin isn't backing down until it's back on track to land the first humans on the moon in the 21st century. Today on Super Freaky Science, we'll be looking at how Blue Origin Moon Lander gets a second chance at landing astronauts on the moon. What is the Blue Moon Lunar Lander? Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin has been at the center of an ongoing legal tussle between NASA and Elon Musk's SpaceX. Blue Origin, alongside SpaceX and a few other companies in the space exploration industry, were in competition for NASA's lunar landing contract to build a human landing system HSL, for the Artemis program. The Artemis program was put forth by NASA to land astronauts on the moon and maintain human presence by building a base on the lunar surface in the future. The program is set to place humans on the lunar surface after nearly 50 years since the first Apollo missions. NASA's call for private space companies saw SpaceX, Dynatex and Blue Origin with its national team, including Northrop Gunman and Lockheed Martin, as the three finalists in contention for the award. Blue Origin's decision to team up with these aerospace giants was an attempt to make up for its limited experience in spaceflight with the technical expertise of these established contractors. Blue Origin and its national team pitched the Blue Moon Lunar Lander, a rocket designed to transport cargo and crew from Earth to the lunar surface. During the pitch, it was revealed that the rocket makes use of the vertical takeoff, vertical landing technology, which enables a vessel to lift off and land vertically. This technology has been used by a few rockets over the last two decades, but has been perfected by private space agencies over the past few years. To date, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket is currently the record holder for the most completed vertical landing missions in history. But it was, in fact, Blue Origin that achieved the first ever successful vertical landing after an unplanned test flight in November of 2015. As of now, Blue Origin has launched its new Shepard vessel over 15 times, with its first crewed flight taking four astronauts, including Jeff Bezos, to space in July. Bezos has revealed that the success of the new Shepard flight will be used to develop the Blue Moon Lunar Lander in preparation for landing humans on the moon. NASA picks SpaceX's Starship instead To the surprise of many, when the time came to choose, NASA picked Elon Musk's SpaceX as the sole recipient of the $2.9 billion contract to build the HLS for the Artemis program. NASA announced the award in April of 2021, stating, SpaceX offered the best value and ratings to the government. This was regarding the cost of developing SpaceX's Starship vessel, which cost a lot less than Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander and Dynetic's Lunar Lander vehicle. NASA reiterated that it was strapped for funding and needed to make the best economic choice, and SpaceX has proven to be a cost-effective company with successful crewed missions to its name. As expected, Blue Origin did not take NASA's decision lightly, with CEO Jeff Bezos protesting the government agency's decision. In the protest filed with the Government Accountability Office (GAO), Blue Origin stated that it detected a flawed acquisition by NASA while citing issues and concerns with the award process. In NASA's own words, it has made a high-risk selection. Their decision eliminates opportunities for competition, significantly narrows the supply base, and not only delays but also endangers America's return to the moon. The statement was directed at NASA's intention to select not just one, but two companies to build the HLS, with the aim of having a backup plan in case the first landing system is unable to deliver within the time frame. This has always been NASA's strategy whenever awarding contracts to private or commercial companies. It was also a bid to foster competition between the private sectors for innovation and technological advancement. 
In Blue Origin's statement to the press, it states that NASA's decision to make SpaceX the sole recipient of the lunar lander contract has effectively solidified all present and future moon landing contracts to SpaceX, not leaving room for the competition by any other company. In Blue Origin's protest filing to the GAO, it stated that NASA's evaluation process and award decision fails to comply with federal procurement statutes and regulations and should be set aside. In response to the protest, NASA maintained its stance that funding was the major factor for choosing just one company to build its lunar lander system. The agency revealed that the United States Congress had only approved a quarter of its proposed budget for the mission and that it barely covers the cost of SpaceX Starship development program, which had the lowest cost of all three contenders. NASA's human spaceflight chief, Kathy Lauders, explained in an official statement, stating that, after accounting for a contract award to SpaceX, the amount of remaining available funding is so insubstantial that, in my opinion, NASA cannot reason ask Blue Origin to lower its price for its Blue Moon proposal. Jeff Bezos' protest officially put SpaceX development of the Starship for NASA on hold for over three months, as the claims were being investigated by the GAO. But after due process, the GAO found no foul play in the award process and gave NASA and SpaceX the go-ahead to continue development. Blue Origin Fights Back Following the decision by the GAO, Jeff Bezos has made another attempt at getting the lunar contract for Blue Origin in a move that can only be termed as desperate. During the GAO's three-month-long investigation into NASA's contract award process, one thing was certain. NASA didn't have the stipulated $2.9 billion to outrightly sponsor the contract it awarded to SpaceX. So the question was, how did they come to an agreement? Well, it turned out that NASA renegotiated the terms of payment with SpaceX, stretching the payment period to enable the agency to source more of its funds from Congress. This agreement was revealed, and Jeff Bezos saw this as another opportunity to land the contract. Blue Origin argued that, if given the chance, it would have renegotiated the terms of its proposal with NASA the same way SpaceX did. In an open letter to NASA's administrator Bill Nelson, Jeff Bezos offered a payment waiver of $2 billion from its initial $5.9 billion proposal, which will put it in the same $2.9 billion contract price awarded to SpaceX. In addition to the slashing of its original proposed price, Jeff Bezos added that Blue Origin is willing to conduct a free-of-charge Pathfinder mission to low Earth orbit to test the capabilities of the Blue Moon rocket. But even with these incentives put forward by Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, NASA maintains that it's unable to award another $2.9 billion contract at this time without dropping SpaceX. And seeing how the company has already begun development on the Starship for the HLS, that is definitely not going to happen. Blue Origin goes to court At this point, it's obvious that Jeff Bezos is determined to put Blue Origin in the history books as the first company to land astronauts on the moon after five decades, and is relentless in his pursuit for the lunar lander contract. After his offer to cut down the price of Blue Origin's proposal was rejected by NASA, Jeff Bezos took one last swing at the agency, taking them to court over the verdict of the GAO regarding his initial protest. Blue Origin filed a lawsuit to the US Court of Federal Claims, citing that the initial investigation carried out by the GAO was improper and unlawful. In the lawsuit, one of the key points was that NASA was putting the lunar mission at risk by entrusting it solely to the hands of SpaceX, without having a backup plan being Blue Origin. In the event of a mishap, or in the situation where SpaceX is unable to make the deadline. The lawsuit also alleges that the fact that NASA was willing to renegotiate proposals with SpaceX and not Blue Origin and the other competitors, Dynatex, shows a level of favoritism to SpaceX within the agency. Will this move by Jess Bezos land Blue Origin the contract or further alienate the company in future contract bids with NASA? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.